there we go. It's not exactly about 2024, my presentation. It's about further ahead than 2024 in the next few years that are coming. And I've coded the times ahead in light of Western esoteric tradition, because it's not just astrology we're going to look at. They're intricately connected, but we're going to look at what anthroposophy, which is uh, Western esoteric spiritual tradition, tells us about the current times, and we'll combine it together with the Three changing planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto using tropical astrology, moving into tropical signs within the next couple of years, all of them will shift signs. And I know it sounds uh, strange for you, what do I mean? <laughs> but I will start a little bit with telling you about the three spiritual beings that Western esoteric tradition tells us. It's not as simple as light versus dark. Satan versus the sun or the light or Jesus or whatever. Uh, it's actually what Rudolf Steiner tells us in Western tradition is that there are three main spiritual beings operating in the soul of mankind. Lucifer, Ariman, also known as Satan in kind of <laughs> uh, ancient times, and the Christ energy. The Christ was also known in Vedic astrology as Vishwakarman, uh, in Persian astrology as Ahura Mazdo, in... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, in Greek, so every religion has a name for the Christ energy as well. We, we're not talking just Christianity here, so it does not alienate some people. It's a principle. And through the history, the Luciferic and Arimanic forces have been in fight to control man's inner nature. And their influence can be seen in events throughout human history. What is the difference? Lucifer is a bit like, imagine manic depressive phases. Lucifer is the manic phase where you're like, ah, oh, you're but a bit out of touch with reality. You're very inspired. Lucifer also brought in uh, the inspiration for, for, uh, for a lot of the arts, but it's also kind of, it's out there. You know, it disconnects you from the world. While the Ariman principle, which is on the other extreme, is like the depressive side. The manic is the Lucifer, the Ariman is the depressive side. So the energy of Ariman are very much, I believe only what I touch, only what is real. Uh, I believe only what science and the facts. It's this energy that uh, kind of, it's only materialistic, extremely materialistic. And actually Rudolf Steiner tells us that not only do those forces exist, and in the middle is the Christ energy. So you're only well when you don't go too much to the Luciferic energy and you don't go too much to the Arimanic. You have to be in the middle, the Christ energy, which is centered in the heart. And that's what healthy people are as well. But Anthroposophy tells us that not only do those forces exist, but they actually take human form. And about 3,000 years before Christ, Lucifer was incarnated in China, a representative of the Luciferic forces, and the Christ was incarnated as in Jesus of Nazareth for three years only, from the age of 30 to 33, uh, uh, in, of course, 2,000 years ago. So those forces that work inside the human body that create humanity and that manifest in different ways in history, they actually also incarnate. And now is the third force, the Arimanic, that Rudolf Steiner said that there is no way it's not going to happen. It's happening. It cannot be stopped. It's part of human evolution. This principle has to be experienced. And the times are very Arimanic. And he says he would appear in a human body uh, in a royal family somewhere in Europe in the early third millennium. And guys, we're in the early third millennium now, right at the border of the age of Aquarius, the age of Pisces and Aquarius. And as you'll see, Ariman's qualities are very <laughs> Aquarian, <laughs> some of the aspects of Aquarius. <clears throat> and what does, according to my research, what does the certain conditions that need to be fulfilled for the incarnation, the coming of power of that being? And one of those is the great development of science, because Ariman works through the nervous system, through the brain, through the, the materialistic principle. Ariman is materialism, disconnection, lack of interest, automation, mechanization of humans and environment. We're seeing this. It's present already. Uh, the coming hour, Ariman also needs um, control of human beings through new technologies. And we're seeing this being implemented and a type of one world government is needed because as it's in, in the Bible and in esoteric astrology, esoteric uh, Western 
practice is that he would kind of rule the world. He would have access to the whole world and say what's happening. So some kind of a new one world government or institution that can control everything is needed before Ehrman can manifest. So a lot of surveillance, AI control, social credit system type of thing, which is already being placed, put in place. And Ariman, another thing is that he opposes everything that is natural. Uh, just like the Christ principle and the Christ lights and being, uh, they uh, operate with natural evolution, with the impulses that come from the sun, that develop the DNA, uh, the virtues of the human naturally. But Ariman wants to do this artificially. So it opposes every divine creation with a negative and artificial counter creation, like artificial foods, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, substances, materials, even artificial substances like this, you know, but environments, artificial DNA manipulation and so on. So this is one of the other things, Arimanic forces that we're seeing is happening already. And just to tell you, Ariman is not just a negative being. We have to experience it. Ariman brings us the ability to understand science. Arimanic impulse has increased since the enlightenment, since the coming of science, it's so good that we can talk with you over the laptop now, over Skype, that we have machines that wash for us. There is a great side of those impulses as well. But when taken to the extreme, like I gave you the example, the manic and depressive side, it comes out of balance. That's why it always has the impulses uh, has to be regulated with the Christ-centered heart energy. Also, Ariman is the master of the intellect, very intelligent energy. So some people that have strongly incarnated Ariman, they would, they would be extremely smart, but sly as well, in a way, cunning. Uh, works in matter and in the nervous system of humans through electricity and the electric system. So since electricity has been discovered, Arimanic energies are more and more infiltrating the earth. And of course, Ariman works in the nervous system, and we see there is more and more nervous conditions with humans in the past. The, I don't know, 40, 50 years, and they'll be increasing. These are Arimanic times. A strong emphasis Ariman has on the left analytical brain, as we can see in our education, that's one of the biggest, you know, they always is about the left brain, or rational thinking, rather than encouraging the other right brain. So Ariman is in AI manifestation, digital, digital technologies. That's why I'm saying it's very strongly connected to Aquarius. That's why it's the reason he's going to incarnate in the age of Aquarius. Uh, and through Ariman's work, man's insight into the spiritual world is obscured. Of course, total materialism. There's so many people that are absolutely materialistic. They don't think they're anything else but their body. Uh, and Ariman, before he can incarnate, he needs to have most of the people believing that they're just atoms, that they're just their physical body, that only the material world exists. So that's the lies, deceptions, the crude materialism and scientism. It's like whatever science proves only is true. And we're really set up for that right now. That's why, you know, that's why it's very close this coming. And of course, Ariman manifests through anything that separates and divides. Ariman has the disquality of the law vibration of Uranus and Saturn, even Saturn. We talked with Philip and he, he says like every planet manifests very high vibrations, but also low so we both thought that Saturn is kind of like the low vibration of Saturn has very arimanic energies. So that would be racism, nationalism, xenophobia, dogmatism, hatred based on differences, whether it's sexes, whether it's color, any division and separations of humans is one of those manifestations. And we're seeing so much of that as well. And of course, Arman wants lack of heart-based human connection. So you're disconnected. So we're we don't have, when you sit next to someone, you don't feel them. This kind of deadening of the natural compassion, natural empathy in the human being. And disconnection from one's work. A lot of people's work is, they just do a part of it, it's automated, or they just do one single part. They don't do the whole project from the beginning of end. And that's another way of disconnecting from the heart, from the whole process. And again, we have this, it started with the industrial revolution and it's continuing. And I believe that uh, this has sped up the coming, the, the groups, we call them uh, occult groups, that the uh, occult groups of the White Lodge and of the Black Lodge that work one for the Christ impulse, the others work for the Arimanic impulse. 
there's secret groups and organizations like that that are working for the coming of those forces that are preparing this. And for me, a big sign was when Saturn and Jupiter conjoined in the zero degrees of Aquarius tropically. Zero degrees of Aquarius tropically, a new beginning, this, this Aquarian Arimanic impulse. Of course, Aquarius is also electricity and all those things and AI that we talk. Is they're ramping up. It's beginning in full speed. And the cycle is 20 years. So I believe that Arimanic coming is somewhere in the next 20 years. It might be just my suggestion, but also we spoke with Philip Philippov and his theory is that this child was born around 1998 when it was three six six sixes, because every time, according to esoteric history and esoteric, uh, um, Rudolf Steiner tells us that every time is the year 666, so 1000, uh, what is it, 666 plus 666, <laughs> it was the year something. There was always very strong impulses of Ariman that came to Earth. And on the third time, which was 1998, is three times 666, is when probably this big impulse, that child was born. And in the next 20 years, it will come into adulthood. So, And of course, this conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn happened on the constellation of Capricorn, the gold in the tropical zodiac of Aquarius which is the local earth zodiac. I always see the tropical zodiac as the local earth. It's more based on the relationship between the solar solstices and equinoxes between the sun and the earth, while the uh, actual constellations is more spiritual. It rules the big periods of time. It's the larger, larger view, you know. <clears throat> so Jupiter and Saturn became almost like one star between the horns of the goat. And what is the symbol of the horns of the goat with a star on the forehead? You know that, this the symbol of certain occult lodges. So that was their signal for me. And that's why things are ramping up. And we're seeing that from 2022. And I want to speak now. I'm rushing through things, but I want to speak about what is coming for the next four, five, six years almost. Uranus, Pluto, and Neptune. It's actually the next one, two years from 2025, already from 2024, Pluto changes signs, goes into Aquarius. Uranus in 2026 goes into uh, uh, Gemini and Neptune goes into Aries. And as we know, the three outer planets that we don't see, the the psycho-spiritual qualities of humanity. So they really are so important. Um, I really respect ancient astrology because it's all about the observable eye. But I also feel so strongly about Uranus, Pluto, and Neptune as kind of uh, almost like influencing the psycho-spiritual evolution of humanity. It, they're invisible, so they, the impulses are more invisible, but they shift the whole perception of humanity. And when the three of them are moving to three signs over the next couple of years, and those three signs are the fastest signs, in, you know, imagine Aries, go, 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 like you see me, Aries, Aquarius, sudden, sudden changes, fast, 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 fast. Gemini, oh my God, Gemini, for me, those, when I think Aries, Aquarius, or Gemini, it's speed for me, all three signs. Imagine what's going to happen. Go, go, go. Imagine how quickly reality will change. Imagine... We will be caught up with our pants down, as they say. Uh, if, if you are not very adaptable, if you're not very quick, uh, if you're not prepared, so hopefully what I'm doing here will prepare us. And of course, people that have a lot of air, fire, they might actually feel quite rejuvenated by that energy, but still will leave them spinning. And so reality is spinning, speeding up. You might start feeling that it's... It's not 24 hours, it's 12 hours, <laughs> one thing. And of course, Uranus in esoteric astrology from the students of Vin Seduno. Vin Seduno taught astrology as well, and he said that Uranus is divine wisdom. Neptune is divine love. Pluto is divine will on the higher scale. Of course, on the lower scale would be exactly the opposite, you know. But on the higher scale, these three planets are responsible for those impulses that were way still have to grow into but imagine how wonderful it will be when the planet of divine wisdom uranus the planet of divine love neptune and the planet of divine will pluto go into a bisextile 
This is a very harmonious aspect. It looks like the roof of a house. So it's kind of a very protective energy. And the positive alignment between these three principles can lead to very auspicious uh, or, or conditions for spiritual development. Imagine aligning divine love, divine will, divine wisdom. God's uh, higher principles will be aligned in a triangular, like the, the Holy Spirit type of, you know, this, uh, this configuration, two sextiles and a trine. So this will be an incredible outpouring, a revival kind of thing, you know, experiencing the etheric Christ, just like Rudolf Steiner said, when uh, towards the end of, you know, 20th century and the start of 21st century, the Christ will start, the Christ impulse will start, the blood will start being etherized. What does it mean? The etheric vision of a lot of people will start opening. A lot of people speak about awakening. This is experiencing the etheric Christ. When you experience sense of unity, total love, light, love that, you know, I, you've read probably many or some of you have experienced it. It's like you're washed by the light. Everything makes sense. There is a sense of unity. It might not be constant that you're in that state, but once you experience it, the Christ being is being born in you. This is the, 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 the second coming of Christ. It's not Christ coming here with his robes and flying from the sky. This is the second coming. you experiencing uh, Christ from within. So this, I see this Uranus, Trine, Pluto, Sextile, Neptune, these three high principles of Christ, of, 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 of divine love, wisdom, and will aligning. Uh, I'm seeing an awakening on a mass scale. And it's going to last for four or five years. They'll be together. And despite of what you'll see that we'll speak about now, Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune, when they move to their signs, despite of what is ramping up from the Black Lodges, this is where the White Lodges, the higher hierarchies are working now to help humanity through this alignment of Uranus, Pluto, sextile. Even though things will speed up, even though the Dark Lodges are working very fast and speed up their side as well, there will be a revival. So once you see the etheric Christ to experience this unity, nothing. This, this is your heart. What, what also they call it nowadays is heart-mind uh, coherence when you achieve it. This is the birth of Christ. Uh, other teachers teach it as meditation, heart-mind coherence. Is this feeling of love, feeling of connection. You might not be constantly oh, zoned out, but once you experience the etherization of the blood, uh, the etheric, the, uh, of the birth of Christ within nothing, no plots, no games, no like the the the, the Arimani principle of deception, of uh, materialism, of, of propaganda, of lies. It's not going to bother you because you'll fill your heart with your heart what is true and what is not true. You, so the more people are like that, there is no way to control such people. There is no way to put such people, and there'll be lots. I'm not saying all humans will awake in the next six years, but I'm seeing those that are ready, those that have worked on their virtues, being kind, good people, helping others, strength, willpower, and so on. They'll start even without having meditated. The theory Christ is born naturally. It's when you, it's a natural evolution with basically, if you build virtues, this will happen, this awakening. So I see feats of willpower, love and wisdom coming in the next four, five, six, seven years. I see the divine hierarchies will be pouring the blessings on humanity more on the spiritual level. They'll pour their higher essence because as you know, everyone, to, something to be created, uh, some a sacrifice has to be made. So humans were created through the essence of the higher beings where they sacrifice their essence fully. So now they'll be sacrificing more of their essence in a harmonious way uh, and many souls will evolve and start to commune with the divine directly. No church needed, no government needed to tell you what is right, wrong. You'd feel it through the heart. That's that's the birth of Christ in you. The heart just knows everything, this immediate truth. The collective consciousness will be more aligned to recognize truths from untruths. So beautiful. And that's what the dark lodges are scared from. That's why they're ramping up everything because this is happening more and more to more and more humans, this revival. Powerful, positive impulses for uplifting of society and humanity as well. So personal transformations. 
danger of passivity because of the easy aspects and people just taking it in without resisting. But I think that a lot of the changes that are coming now, there will be a lot of people will be able to adapt much easier because they are in harmonious aspect. Those three planets changing signs are in harmonious aspect. So people will glide into it a bit more easier. People attuned to higher virtues and divine will be protected and thrive in the spirit, while others will be joyfully served on a platter to the harmonic agenda. Okay, let's continue. And now we're going to look at Uranus, Pluto, and Neptune changing signs. Uh, and we're going to look at the law manifestations, what is happening in view of the Arimanic principle. Because as we said, the law law just needs certain principles to be uh, fulfilled on earth, the black lodges, so Ariman can take over. Uh, and it's a short taking over, as we know from esoteric science as well. <laughs> uh, it's just a few years, but you know, Ariman has to come whatever it is, it has to come. <laughs> and it's, you know, and after that, hopefully, <laughs> we enough people have awakened so they recognize that and don't vote for the lie. You know, for the lie of becoming artificial, mixing themselves, their DNA, mixing mixing with machines and, you know, kind of diluting or, or, or messing up God's divine creation because they'll be denied access to natural evolution and to the Christ energy, then you're kind of like an automate and a robot without a soul walking on earth. But Pluto in Aquarius negative manifestations, let me go quickly. Of course, it can be, it's for the next 20 years. It can be AI taking over, Pluto is control, digital control, Aquarius, digital, digitalization of everything, mechanization of everything. You know, everything is like buttons pressing, scientism, scientific technocratic, technocracy is Aquarius as well, scientist is Aquarius, dictatorship, Pluto, abomination of science, DNA experiments, merging humans and machines. This is, it's horrifying. Some will be doing it. Uh, the lowest will always manifest. Some will be doing it. Those that recognize through the Christ that etherized blood uh, through their heart, they will not be doing it. So there will be a splitting of humanity. Basically, that's how I see it. Some will go for it blindly and others will be connected to the Christ energy and will withstand all of this. Of course, social credit system to control. Pluto, Aquarius is social programs. Pluto is credit <laughs> as you know and of course social credit system is coming they'll try to do it let's see how long it lasts for the greater good to control people control free movement of people you can't go further than say 50 kilometers from your home whatever persecutions and suppressions pluto when i look back actually there was a lot of times pluto was in aquarius there were persecutions like nero was persecuting the christians uh, some of the worst persecutions happened then uh, also around the year 200 or 300, there was again another persecutions of Christians. I'm not saying Christians will be persecuted, but there will be persecution of free speech, for example, of outliers, descenders, anyone that does not agree with the na narrative. Pluto is persecution, oppression, suppression of three thinkers, free communities, uh, alternative methods of economy, alternative methods of connecting with people, those trying to enlighten humanity, there will be persecution. So even of some communities that have joined together, all the Aquarian things, they'll be, they can be persecution. There might be persecutions of astrologers as well, who knows? Uh, persecutions of true altruists. Uh, dangerous and EMF, Aquarius is electromagnetic frequencies. And we know we're swimming in those. And I told you, Ariman also works through frequencies and electronic, uh, through electricity and in the nervous system. And that's why there are also so many nervous conditions now. If your blood is not etherized, if you're not connected to your heart through empathy, through you know, all those Christian principles of love, empathy, kindness, heart, being heart-based, uh, your brain is being fried, your whole body is being fried by EMFs and it will escalate with Pluto in Aquarius. It will be like a prison of, of of EMFs and uh, dangerous and poisonous EMFs. And, and of course, the nervous system starts breaking down. But if your heart is strong, this does not affect you. If the heart cries principle, I'm not saying be a Christian, I'm saying the, the virtues that we're talking about. 
if you're heart centered and connected, you can feel love to others, to beings, you know, this is. And increase of nervous conditions will be observed, especially in people disconnected from their heart center. Uh, those who are, they're protected. Less people. Aquarius is the population, is the normal people, is the uh, uh, the demographics, the number of people. Aquarius is the people. Well, Pluto is death. So unfortunately, we're seeing this already. There is 40, 50 percent higher mortality in some of the not first world countries since Pluto started entering Aquarius a year ago. We're seeing this and it's a possibility as well. High mortality of humans or fertility issues, kind of genocides. We're seeing genocides as well. Uh, remember, Pluto in Aquarius will be less humans, while Pluto in Leo was the baby boom, the baby boomers, uh, the opposite sign. Economic collapse. Aquarius rules the markets, economy, all complicated systems. Pluto can be crash of the economic system, uh, which leads to all digitally controlled financial system, which is totally surveyed. That's the law of manifestation. And of course, one of the most dangerous things can be cyber terrorism. Pluto is terrorism, Aquarius is cyber, cyber attacks. And there might be five false flag events like that to lead to CBDC or something like that. But now let's look at the positive manifestation of Pluto in Aquarius. So these are all things that the Arimanic principle, the negative, is trying to implement. And those working with the Marimani principles. Now, let's see what the White Lodges are trying to do <laughs> with Pluto in Aquarius. Fast, organic, of, because Pluto is very much connected to evolution. In uh, evolutionary astrology, is the evolution of the soul. Also, Pluto rules DNA uh, and such kind of, you know, the very microscopic building blocks. So, Again, I see very fast evolution of consciousness. And Aquarius is the sign of awakening of your brain as well. Aquarius rules the nervous system, the brain, and Pluto is this evolution. So they, for those of you who don't decide to merge with machines, <laughs> God forbid, uh, Aquarius, Pluto in Aquarius can bring very fast uh, evolution of consciousness of some of the brain centers there. Telepathy, who knows, you know, see, leading to the seeing of the etheric Christ, developing intuition. Aquarius is very strong intuition where you download information. So then downloads, natural DNA upgrade. So stay with the natural wave. <laughs> I believe Pluto in Aquarius will see that, like huge jump in consciousness in humans. Discovering and implementing of alternative energy sources that are not dirty, you know, Aquarius. Pluto is, of course, atoms and the, on the very small level. Uh, below molecules, even atom subatomic levels, Aquarius is energy sources. So we can find such ones that are free energy of some sort that frees people, Aquarius as well. Uh, uh, awareness of EMF damage. So a lot of people start realizing that and find doing protection of some sort. There is a lot of methods developed as well. Uh, atrocities of science will be revealed. Awareness of the danger of the digitalization, because Pluto reveals everything that is dirty as well, that is um, that is very atrocious, that is um, for suppression, and people will gain strong awareness, knowledge, Aquarius about that. So it will become, everyone will know that. And once there is knowledge, of course, about something, uh, a lot of, you know, we start seeing change. So atrocities of science revealed awareness of dangers of digitalization, revolutions from the grassroots, Aquarius for freedom. You'll see a lot of revolutions. Oh my God, that when Pluto was in Aquarius last time, the French Revolution, the American Revolution, and they all wanted freedom from suppressive, um, you know, and entitled regimes, and they got it. So this is very helpful. You might get our freedom, guys, from suppressive <laughs> regimes. Uh, viral spreading of deep knowledge and secrets revealed. Aquarius is very fast moving. Aquarius is something viral, viral spreading of deep knowledge and secrets revealed. Once something becomes known, it's not going to be like before, oh, 9-11 happened, 20 years later, we start doubting it. No, now if there is a false flag or something happens, and if it's not true, within two hours, everyone will be already suspicious and know about that. Total change of the social system towards more sovereignty, power to the normal people. 
So that's just like it happened in France and in Americas. Creation of power sales communities working towards common, common goal outside of the system. We'll see a lot of that, guys. And they'll have power and they'll transform their reality. And they'll be independent. Aquarius is independent. They'll bind together in some way and be independent from the system and give a, a show a different way of how the system can be, show a different way of how humanity and society can be. Of course, I believe there will be a new internet as well. Of course, they'll create an internet where you can log in only on one side, only with ID, but there'll be an alternative internet that appears for those that don't want to participate in the system so much. A heightened intuition to perceive truths from untruths. Science evolves to integrate knowledge and research of the fine and invisible worlds. I definitely believe that science will reach now to, once they've reached the quantum level, the subatomic Plutonian level, uh, I think very soon they'll, and I know they do it in CERN already, that they, they do rituals there to contact entities, but they're colliding, they're colliding subatomic particles because they open portals, by the way. Uh, if you, They open portals to the lower astral world, though. But I believe that science will start finding now ways to, to Science will finally accept that there is invisible worlds, that is just 1% what we're seeing from visible reality, and starting to base science on that over the next 20 years. And of course, profound discoveries about subatomic physics, but one thing to warn you, there is such danger when they collide those sub subparticles in uh, CERN or whatever, that they contact the lower astrals where there is dangerous entities opening portals. That's the negative manifestation of Pluto in Aquarius that they worry about as well. Now, Uranus in Gemini from 2025 to 2032, uh, the negative manifestations, of course, what is Gemini? It's your neighborhood, digitized neighborhood, 15 minute cities. You know, you can't pass by, you have two, three days to go in certain areas. They'll digitize the neighborhoods. That's what our harmonic forces will try to do to gain that control. Electrification and EMFs all around the local inhabited spaces. Because, of course, Aquarius, Uranus is like Aquarius. Uranus is EMFs, electric currents, all around your schools, all around your local inhabited spaces, and so on. Total digitization of education, which even more disconnects you from the heart center when you can't connect with the teacher on a soul level. Again, that goes against the Christ principles. More impersonal education, digital inventory of everything. Have you heard of the Internet of Things? They want to digitize, they want to do an inventory of every tree and bush, not to mention humans, not to mention rocks. The Internet of Things, they're doing it with Uranus in Gemini, because Gemini is very much Internet uh, inventory and lists. And so everything will be in some kind of you know, AI, <laughs> daily interactions, more distant, digitized, mainly communications through devices. That's very much a darker side of Uranus in Gemini. Transport, fully digitized, electric cars. This is what the harmonic forces will be pushing. So you can't go wherever you want. Uh, but if you're a descendant, maybe they can stop your transport. And they're pushing for over the next uh, 10 years, well, Uranus is in Gemini. They might stop insurance for cars that are not digitized, for example, that are not electric. And they'll push for uh, using more trains and so on. Gemini rules IDs, documents, papers. Uranus in Gemini is digital IDs. Uranus is digital, Gemini is IDs. To travel, to move freely, where it will have your vaccination status, your social credit status or your money or whatever, whatever they'll put. <sighs> but it can include all kinds of information in those IDs. Big changes in the transportation and traveling industry through AI, focus on short travel, Gemini is short travel rather than long travel. And of course, they're already talking that let's develop local space travel. Let's, uh, let's people have very easy access to their local parks, to close cities nearby. But let's have by 2030, just one flight, one two-way flight every two years per person. So we don't want, they don't want the long distance travel. It's kind of like more focused on short distance travel rather than long international travel. Using a lot of propaganda on media at schools as well. The Gemini is the media in the school. Uranus is connected to propaganda. 
worrying now, something that worries me is uh, Gemini's neighborhoods, neighboring cities, the warring. And this has happened when Uranus was in Gemini before there were civil wars uh, that happens in again during the American Civil War when Uranus was in Gemini again. And the uh, Cold War started, civil wars. The Cold War started also when Uranus is in Gemini. So we're seeing something similar, kind of separating the world in two parts. You know, Gemini is the brothers that are fighting. Uh, mechanization and digitization of all transactions, commerce, business is Uranus in Gemini. Uh, science takes over more and more constant updates, innovations that those that don't keep up can become quickly relevant, obsolete. First brain digital implants for Im immediate success, access to information. Gemini is information. Uranus, I think now they will be during the next seven, eight years, the first brain implant where you're merging your mind with the digital implant. <laughs> That will happen during Gemini and Uranus. But what is positive here? Gemini and Uranus. What can the light forces work through? Uh, you know, the printing press was created in 1940 when Uranus was in Gemini. The scientific revolution was invented that it helped humanity a lot to have more comfort of living. The first telescope was invented. The first newspaper was when Uranus was in Gemini. Isaac Newton uh, made the publishes the laws of mechanics, so great advancement in science, in knowledge, definitely. Some of the biggest uh, scientific discoveries and science discoveries was with Uranus in Gemini. And now coupled with Pluto in Aquarius, oh my God, our minds will be blown. I just hope the sun, we don't use it for dark things, but it will be probably used for very good things and for very dark things. The first steam engine was discovered, was created when Uranus was in Gemini. The first phone, the first supersonic planes, wow. So many things, so we'll see this. Some of the biggest new travel devices, there'll be probably some flying, Uranus is to go high to fly. Maybe within seven, eight years, a lot of households will have those flying devices. So some kind of different way of uh, flying that will be introduced, big developments there, faster travel. There'll be trains, there'll be big developments of trains, mark my words, very high speed trains that will start taking over the next seven, eight years, plus also, some forces want us to move through trains rather than personal cars, but that can be very convenient for many people. Uh, big changes in communication, new alternative internet, again, this comes up. Um, new ways to communicate that gives you freedom from the system, Uranus, you know. Uh, and there'll be boom of new businesses as well, Gemini's businesses. Gemini is online businesses and so on. I see a lot of people starting to uh, really have, be able to participate in the system of the market to be financially better off by doing their own businesses and being independent of their own businesses online somehow. Of course, Uranus in Gemini will help us develop alternative education system more aligned to current children. You'll see alternative systems that are more you know, align to the new children that the, the old system is obsolete. The old system that's been very prevalent since the last time Uranus was in Gemini. Revolution of the educational system. I believe a lot of new alternative schools will appear. I believe there will be more freedom and custom-based approach in education. Child-led education. Democratic type of schools. Google it if you don't know what it is. It's incredible concepts with children thriving there. And they decide the curriculum. They decide what they study. They just ask help from the teachers. This freedom of Uranus will come into education. Less focus on higher education and more on apprenticeships and hands-on learning, which is Gemini. This will be a boom rather than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars for higher education, unless you're a doctor. <coughs> Sorry, lawyer. Uh, but a lot of people, oh, <laughs> sorry, for higher, for apprenticeships and hands-on learning and courses, online courses that they take. Boom of educational resources and companies. If you want to learn something, there will be no excuse that you're poor, you don't have anything. There will be very cheap access to resources of any kind of knowledge. And I make a prediction, the stocks of educational companies, you'd see the first educational companies go on the stock market or 
become very successful. Anyone that is through educating others. So that would be a next big boom for the next seven, eight years as an opportunity, universities, classes, courses, you know, anything, and it will be more accessible for people in any way. And okay, many new social media apps will appear. AI TV programs and movies where you get, I don't know how good it is, but Say I can write, I want Angelina Jolie to play with uh, Brad Pitt, this kind of scene, and you'll see it played out. So this will become, you can create your own realities with now with what is with AI. There'll be such quick boom of AI, guys. So like if anyone has to want to study something, go study AI and astrology, because Uranus and Gemini will have a great big jump ahead with astrology and Pluto and Aquarius. These are so aligned to the development of astrology. There will be such discoveries there and interests. The generations will kind of put on a pedestal or get obsessed over astrology over the next 20 years ahead and even more with Pluto in Aquarius. Um, digital implants for mobility uh, kind of as well. New, what? Digital first digital implants for mobility. What I don't know what I've written. Sorry, new supercomputers, AI innovations in literature, many new amazing books with divine wisdom and inspiration. Uranus, the higher vibration is divine wisdom. So some incredible knowledge is coming to us that will be downloaded, that will become accessible to us, Gemini, for people for the to reach it. Some knowledge, some system of knowledge as well. Uh, for example, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, which revolutionized our understanding about uh, the sacred scriptures and divine wisdom. Uh, so another time Pluto in Aquarius and Uranus was in Gemini was in 1770, 1774 to 1781. This period marked the transition between the age of enlightenment and the industrial revolution. And it also featured lots of fighting as per usual. Lots of fighting, lots of, as we said, so possible civil unrest and Pluto revolutions, Pluto in Aquarius, American revolution began in that period. So let's hope that America might split, not, not let's go. I hope, let's let's not hope America might split or the states, but you can we can expect something about it more, so, more like splitting of humanity in those that are uh, uh, going towards the Aramanic impulse blindly and those who are going to the Christ impulse more, to the ether, to the more organic natural evolution life stream, the heart-based approach to life rather than just the mind-based approach, which would be the Aramanic, which is the more rational. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be rational, we should be, but not just, you have to synchronize the mind and the heart. And fighting for freedom. Human Rights Treaty in 1940s was established, the last Juma, Uranus in Gemini. Independence of uh, India was during the last, last Uranus in Gemini. Figures like Gandhi appeared during the last Uranus in Gemini. So we'll have some incredible figures, revolutionary fighting for freedoms, for the freedom, for the human rights. Nuremberg trials were during Uranus in Gemini. <laughs> Who knows, we might have something similar again. And then let's look quickly to Neptune. Oh, I have four minutes, so hopefully I can finish. Neptune in Aries, which will conjunct Saturn. This is the earliest influence, actually, 2024, 2025. I think <coughs> we'll start feeling it already from 2025. And I think the conjunction is in Aries, but also have a lot of Pisces energy to it because it's in the constellation of Pisces, but in Aries. The negatives, every time Neptune and Aries uh, in Saturn conjunct, they can be, but actually Neptune, Saturn, hard aspects, every time you check, there's always, almost always, let's say 80% of the times, some kind of pandemic and disease. So like the, the, the 2017, uh, 1917 bird flu, uh, not birth flu, Spanish flu was during Saturn-Neptune conjunction. Looking back, there were uh, uh, big outbreaks, pandemics as well. So that's a possible that we have a serious one around that time that can be used to take freedoms and 
control humanity even more. Disasters as well, natural disasters. Chemical, Neptune is something chemical, chemical war, bioweapons. Because it's in areas, it can be some chemical or virus or something can be used as a bioweapon. That's one of the dangers. I see at least that's how I interpret it. Areas, weapons, Neptune, Saturn is chemical, bio, uh, natural disasters possible. With Neptune, Saturn, and with hard aspect of the conjunctions, like for example, the tsunami in 2004 and other types, there is natural disasters, water problems, floods that can happen, controlling people through water so shortages. That's what the black lodges can use it. Uh, so lots of water, either water drying out, or water, something with the water, you know, problems that I've seen back and with dams breaking and so on. Restrictive and aggressive actions towards religions, which can be like Neptune, which can take as religion. And we've seen that communism destroyed churches and vine religion when Neptune and Saturn joined in 1917 and the Bolsheviks came to power. Destruction of religious and sacred relics. Uh, the monasteries, the, another uh, conjunction of Neptune and Saturn in the 1960s, there was a big destruction of religious and sac sacred relics, uh, relics and monasteries. So we can see some kind of religious persecutions or some kind of a religious aggressive actions towards, I can say even nowadays, not even religion, but spirituality or spiritually based people. Some kind of banning or censoring, trying to do that. Nowadays, it's not done in such aggressive ways. But with Saturn, it might be, you know, some kind of punitive measures towards people spreading spiritual ideas and so on, or new ideals. Big important developments with communist ideologies always happen during Saturn conjunct Neptune. For example, Karl Marx was born during such conjunction and he created communism. The Red Revolution happened then when communists took over uh, Russia. The fall of communism in Eastern Europe also happened with the last Neptune-Saturn conjunction in Capricorn. So big development. So we can expect either some communist regimes falling down or humanity being imposed, the communists like owning nothing, private property being taken. Of, and that's a cycle that will last for 30 years after that. And there is it 30? I forgot how many, 30 something. 35 years. So Neptune, Saturn conjunction, there might be some push towards human like, taking of private property, Saturn of tangible assets or disappearing, tangible assets or disappearing, your security disappearing in some way. So it can be tough times. But as I said, there are good aspects to Saturn-Neptune conjunction from Uranus and Pluto. So I think there'll be a way that we pass through it smoother, not through so much shakeups. But there can be something that almost like communists like imp imposing of, you know, private property or whatever those principles that we've seen clashes between science and religion we can see as well wars based on religious or the biolo ideological basis because it's areas it's a warlike sign uh for example the crusades were in their full swing when the last time uranus and neptune because they conjunct in the 1200s or something 1200s and there were the crusades then religious wars I don't think it's going to be in this way now, but there'll be something happening there because of religious ideologies. And Neptune was in Aries. Uh, now well, I'm not looking just at the Saturn conjunction, but Neptune was in Aries together with Uranus in Gemini when the US Civil War happened. <laughs> Interesting again. And divided the nation into North and South. So Neptune in Aries also brings this warlike qualities. Medical control and tyranny. Now, Saturn is control. Neptune is all the medical industry. If we look into Western astrology, of course, uh, pharmaceuticals and so on. So hopefully it's the negative. It might be the World Health Organization becoming an overlord of all nations, which they're planning to do from 2024. So that's total control of everyone by the World Health Organization. So all countries lose their sovereign sovereignty and the ability to make decisions for the what their citizens can do in a moment of a pandemic. So if the World Health Organization says compulsory medication, they send in the EU, U, UN forces and uh, the governments cannot resist. So that's one danger that I'm seeing with Neptune-Saturn conjunction. That can be military enforced as well in case of a pandemic or something, because there's also this energy is very 
you know. Okay, loss of uh, security and stability, we talked about dissolution and disappearance of material savings that Saturn, Neptune is dissolution of securities, of guarantees. So you have, you know, it, it, even that might not be stable anymore. Some massive loss can happen around that time. Loss, grief, and confusion on a massive scale, a collective tragedy and loss of some kind. Now let's look at the positive. That's my last thing. So let's end on a positive note. Neptune in Aries, positive, powerful spiritual impulses and miraculous manifestation of divine love. When I checked the last time there was a miraculous manifestation witnessed by 30,000 people was Fatima in 1917 when some other horrific things were happening like communism taking over and churches being destroyed in Russia and in Eastern Europe. At the same time, the Mother Mary Fatima appeared in Fatima and the sun moved, 30,000 people, how many witnessed that? I see that something like that will be very strong. I believe it will be happening because it's on the constellation of Pisces behind. It's in the sign of Aries, but the constellation of Pisces, powerful Christ impulse as well. Being for those that are ready, Neptune is divine love, Saturn is materialization, Saturn is uh, manifestation of spiritual principle, manifestation of angels, manifestation and intangible way of miraculous things, but also the birth of the Christ energy inside us. I believe this will be a conjunction that brings a lot of people in contact again with the Christ principle, with the awakening, whatever you want to call it, the awakening, this feeling of love. Powerful manifestations of love, compassion, bravery in tough times, collective expression of charity in practical terms. You would see humans open their heart like never before. You would see humans doing feats of, of, of compassion in a tangible way, giving away food, or blankets, or taking people in their houses, or whatever it has to be. People will be doing it in a practical way, tangibly. Uh, new spiritual and political ideology will appear. New maybe political system will appear, something that is not just two systems like left and right, Democrats, whatever, it's pretty much everywhere is like that. New political, new ideological system will appear. Totally new. It's at the zero degrees areas they're meeting. Something totally, totally new, new way of reality. Institutions, Saturn is institutions, Neptune is dissolution, old systems will be dissolving. Uh, they will be falling down like flies. Old systems, whatever we've trusted and we had security in for years and decades, uh, these institutions will be dissolved and new ones will come in their place. Uh, trust in them disappearing, but very quickly new ones appear because of the zero degrees activation of something very new. Rising of romanticized heroes like Alfred, it happened when Neptune was in Aries. Robin Hood when Neptune was in Aries as well. Someone that comes and saves, uh, someone who is strong and fights for the truth, the Aries energy and comes and saves the weak ones, you know. But someone who fights for ideals, such figures will appear and such feats of heroism uh, will appear. Big reformation <laughs> and changes in world religions. For example, the last time Mira Neptune was in Aries, King Henry VIII uh, married seven times or eight times, and just so he can marry, he split. That was the first defiance towards the Roman Catholic Church, the first one who dared to do it, to undermine the power of the Roman Catholic Church. So something we'll see with the church happening big. It might be a push for a totally new kind of church or religion with Neptune being at the zero energy. But... With, Nep with Saturn, some kind of reformations and changes in world religions. Slavery was abolished when Neptune was in Aries and Uranus was in Gemini, like we'll have again. So this is one great thing. The Red Cross was established. First trade unions were created to help people and workers. So big positive reforms for those in need, Neptune, the victimized Neptune, the workers as well, Saturn. Social reforms for the underclasses and the working people. So that's, so there's a lot of good coming for us guys as well. I'm sorry if I scared you with some of the things. What can we do to prepare? I'm not going to talk to that. So I don't take time from the other, but I'm putting it here for you. <laughs> uh, the most important thing, as I said, I think develop virtues, develop yourself, your card connection, 
trying to feel love. So the Christ principle is born within you. So you cannot be lied, you cannot be misled. And I'll leave it at that. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to participate. Uh, thank you, everyone. Blagotarya to you, uh, Lada. <laughs> You, you so have much. been a wonderful, a fascinating presentation and an heroic one because you are in feverist. Still, you managed to present your talk. And that's <laughs> that's a major feat, you know, because not everybody could do that. But you are an Aries. Oh. Heroic. <laughs> so you, you did it. Uh, congratulations for this too and may you get well soon many people say i'm saying i'm sending positive uh, energy to lada right now so oh, thank she you recovers. so much and uh, you. if you, you might have questions uh, we have created a special okay. uh, facebook page if you can visit it it's astrology um, conferences uh, uh european conferences may i show the screen for a, a minute philip yes uh, of course lada can you take off your uh, share screen oh i, I already okay. made it okay uh -huh. this is the page and these are the questions there are more questions i have already created here a special post you may ask here questions on Astrolada's talk and you're uh, you got already some people and other questions as well since this is our lunch break uh, many people want to know more details on the astrological university there is a section for that too so please any kind of questions you have on our uh, speakers on the astrological university please visit the European Astrology Conferences page on Facebook. Blagotaria again, Lada. Thank you so much. I'm starting answering people here as well. Uh, you may use question and answering <laughs> platform uh, that is behind uh, here uh, under the buttons. Um, I wish to say something about your lecture. It's uh, very well structured. And uh, the fact that you positionize the negative and positive forces, the light and darkness very well, it's very helpful to a lot of people. Um, and you uh, very interestingly analyze the, the situation. Uh, the only one thing is that now there will be 2024 will be uh, Uranus Jupiter conjunction, which oh. is something major. And oh. uh, on the basis of this, uh, we continue to develop a astrological university that we announced just before one, two hours before you yeah. enter to your lecture. And, That's the perfect uh, time for it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And soon we will have the program and all people have ability to uh, enroll or to ask directly on the website of the university or into the Facebook group that uh, Thomas explained. And... Um, Something important, uh, like a uh, question about you. Uh, do you somehow uh, experience the this etherization of the blood of with second coming of Christ on etheric level? Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there are small like, small steps in this direction and no, I'm sure you make it like moments when you connect and you feel so much love for something for someone these are glimpses of it this is how exactly. I and sometimes especially if I haven't eaten for a few days or a couple of days that's when it comes when you're very clean your body or when I'm very weak sometimes it comes <laughs> for some reason but very yes. calm and but not constantly <laughs> yes i ask you directly because we should remove the borders in in front of our consciousness that uh, um, uh, disturb our uh, connection with christ and uh, this etherization that's why um, we should not afraid to speak about these topics we should uh, go openly and ask openly christ to help us in this and exactly how you explain this is not Christian religion process. This is for all people on the earth. And um, it's not depend from 
or which kind of and branch of religion you come here. Uh, Christ being is the universal being of whole cosmos, the consciousness of the galaxy and our sun. And the, practically, I should say something important. Uh, very often they say the king of this world or um, something like this, um, like a bad interpretation. No, the king of this world now is Christ. And it is... Amen. <laughs> yes, this is the situation, and uh, this happened after the uh, the fact that Christ uh, started the um, Golgotha mystery and put the whole humankind in evolution independently from any religion. Uh, practically, Christ didn't make Christianity. Uh, religion is not created by him. He gave only the teaching and the way towards um, the divine, and uh, human creates religions. And um, we should be uh, directly connected with Christ. And this is something important here. We should remove any mediator between our soul and Christ, our soul and consciousness of, of cosmos and consciousness of our sun and galaxy. We should remove any borders between us. And this is a very important process. And if religion making this border and making this, um, how to say, mediation between our soul and Christ, uh, it will be removed from Christ. If somebody try to put this mediation by force between your soul and somebody uh, else or to, uh, to the Christ, the cosmos and immune system of our planet will remove these um, disturbances uh, from your spiritual life. And the same happened um, with these discussions about are we, are we free and allow um, to have the University of Astrology, <laughs> all people that try to disturb this process or organization, government structures to disturb this organization will be removed from the immune system of cosmos and the, our planet. That's why <laughs> we live in very active uh, period. And this beautiful basic style that you um, explain so well, I think this is some Im immunology process on the planetary organism level and this is a very good uh, concept that you explain so well into your lecture and i'm sure uh, maybe if you wish um, we will give you the, the record the, of, from your um, uh, speech and you put it into your um, beautiful okay. channel uh, a lot of people to to see this amazing situation and I hope together with Thomas, we will make some, and you, uh, we will make some discussions publicly oh, because yeah. we have a lot of uh, beautiful ideas together. Okay, oh, yeah. uh, let me see some questions. I go to the end first. Um, I was international travel. I registered for this conference. How do you, uh, I get the reply of this, please? Uh, you will get the record. Um, some other people say to the previous lecture, Elena. Um, okay. Uh, somebody have question about the understanding of uh, 666. Uh, the first situation that we remember uh, was connected with the destroying uh, of the first temple of Jewish people before Christ. Then a uh, big transformation of the humanity around coming of Muhammad. The, the second after Christ was the moment when the Catholic Church decided to remove the teaching of individual spirit of every human. And now we are in the third period where uh, 1998 uh, mm, preparation, maybe conception, not burning, but conception of this person um, and maybe the the birth of this person happened around um, solar eclipse in August 1999. But this is hypothesis. Okay. Um, okay. Some other question. Let me see. Uh, what subatomic and quantum physics has to do with real spiritual worlds? Okay, a lot of things, uh, a lot of things. Uh, this is one question from very advanced uh, anthroposophic person, Vladimir Komarov. Um, 
of course, there is a conflict, spiritual conflict here, but um, there are different points of view about this. What do you think Lala, about this question? So what the, what I have been, uh, where I'm taking this from is that when you mess with the subatomic particles, you make yes. all, you, you make rip like, like CERN, like the big hard on colliders. And, uh, yes. it's, uh, it's not just a supposition there. Um, maybe some would say it's conspiracies, but the, the stories, real life stories from, uh, people that have worked there that they contact entities this way. That's one of the reasons they're doing it. It's not just for science experiments and these are lower astral entities. So somehow the subatomic going into this really small particle, there is a way and, and experimenting with them, there is a way to rip develop reality to some level. So I'm just taking this from uh, stories from people that work at CERN. Yes. Okay, there is a one a strange, uh, a little bit question about, um, uh, is there something good at all into um, animal forces because you interpret it by positive way some of the situation? If you wish, I try to explain here. Um, we should be um, looking into every process from the point of view of God. And God will use the animal influences for good. This is the idea. You, what is your opinion here? Absolutely. Just like with Lucifer, who is supposed to be a body, but if it wasn't Lucifer 3,000 years before Christ, there will be no arts and <laughs> there will not be certain spiritual developments of humans. So it's, uh, Ariman is needed to develop our, I think that Ariman is developing the really rational brain as well. But that's the thing, we shouldn't go to the extreme either manic or depressive, you know, it should be in the middle. That's, these energies are needed, but are we gonna uh, basically just tip the scale in one direction? It has to be in the middle. Yes, and uh, when we discuss in one uh, YouTube lecture, if you remember, this was the period of uh, when we make a hypothesis that maybe uh, going to Mars or from humankind uh, life with one starship there. Uh, maybe it's connected somehow with these processes too. And this Uranus in Gemini uh, that you explain and Pluto in, in Aquarius, it's possible uh, to see in this direction too. Uh, we spoke about this in uh, mm -hmm. two days before in the conference. Great. Uh, Landa, uh, request please. There is a Greek lady who congratulates you, of course, but uh, she was impressed by your interpretation on Neptune and Saturn and begs you if you can show for a few seconds slides number uh, 10, I think, uh, number uh, 10, 11, and 12, just for a few seconds. So she takes screenshots of the slides. Yes. Um, it's important during this process to say that um, uh, when uh, Lada explained about one of the major sources about understanding the higher planets, she used the spiritual name of Master Peter Dunov, which is Ben Saduno. Um, and uh, if, if uh, there are people that do not know this name, they should know that this is the spiritual name of Master Peter Dunov. who creates our astrological school in Bulgaria. And people should know that Lada is um, another great leader from the Bulgarian astrological school. Oh. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I've been following here because I've watched so many people on YouTube, bloggers, etc. But I want spiritual quality and I was impressed by Lada which I thought, oh, this is an American. That's what I thought in the beginning. Oh, another American presenting astrology the American way. Uh, a little bit walkish, no spirituality, whatever. And then I listen to her and I say, I like this person. It is spiritual. It is deep. Uh, she's interpreting astrology in a very 
complete way, and uh, I watch many videos of Astrolab. Oh, thank you. So now much. you discovered that she is Bulgarian, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not walkist American, Thomas. No, 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 no. No more walkism. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very embarrassed. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but my flu, my temperature rose again. <laughs> uh, the divine cosmic healer uh, of Christ will heal you very soon, very actively, and you will be in good condition. Um, I'm sure in this. Amen. <laughs> much better. Okay. Feeling much better. Thank you. Like <laughs> exhilarating. Yes. Okay. Uh, if uh, some other questions, 